Let's use this model as an example to go over the basic anatomy of a neuron. This is a multipolar neuron, and in just a couple of minutes here, I'll go over in more details what multipolar means. Um, but here, this section right here is what we call the cell body or the soma. There is um, cytoplasm inside of the cell body, which is referred to as perikaryon. Sometimes we might see the word perikaryon refer to this entire portion, but in our classes, you'll hear us say soma or cell body. These little branches that come off of the cell body are called dendrites. And when we're talking about classifying different types of neurons, you'll wanna really know that this is the cell body and then pay attention to how many processes come off of that cell body. So because there are many, that's why I said this is a multipolar neuron. Um, remember that the dendrites are going to receive um, information. We actually have graded potentials that will come through the dendrite end of a neuron. Coming off of the soma is this long process here. It's this blue part. Um, that's called the axon, and the axon is what connects a neuron to either another neuron, um, it could be a muscle cell, or it might be um, a gland cell. These bundles right here represent coverings on the axon called the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath is something you'll likely talk a lot more about in lecture. Um, when we're in the central nervous system, the cells that create the myelin sheath are called oligodendrocytes. And if we're in the peripheral system, the cells that create the myelin sheath are called neurolemocytes or Schwann cells. In between each section of myelin, we are going to have a gap called a neurofibril node. In years past, we've referred to this as the nodes of Ranvier. Um, but neurofibril node is the term that we're seeing a lot more these days. Not all neurons have a myelinated uh, axon, um, but this is a cool concept because if you recall, the axonal end of a neuron is where we're gonna have um, depolarization and repolarization. This is really important to think about because the myelin acts as a great insulator, meaning ions can diffuse through that. So um, unmyelinated axons have to go through that uh, depolarization, repolarization, the entire length of the axon. Remember, that's going to involve sodium and potassium voltage-gated channels. Um, whereas when we have myelin, it will go through so, uh, a depolarization and repolarization, and the sodium kind of diffuses through, and then it will only go through that depolarization, repolarization cycle at the neurofibril node. So it allows for a faster propagation of signals. Um, and when the signal kind of jumps in between these nodes, that's what's referred to as saltatory conduction. The reason why we care about that is because it helps us understand um, disorders like multiple sclerosis or MS. Um, multiple sclerosis is a degeneration of the oligodendrocyte, so we're in the central nervous system, and it's an autoimmune disorder, so um, uh, the body attacks the oligodendrocytes here. When it breaks down this myelin, it basically disrupts the signals that are traveling down this neuron. The attack can cause scarring, and that's where that term sclerosis comes from of this. And so this affects both sensory and motor function, which is why um, people who suffer from MS um, can have visual impairments or their motor functions can be impaired as well. Something that we could tie this to in the peripheral nervous system with the neurolemocytes or the Schwann cells is a condition called Guillain-Barr syndrome. With Guillain-Barr syndrome, the myelin is affected in kind of this retrograde direction, meaning um, we'll have muscle weakness in the distal limbs, and that actually travels more proximally, um, and we can have continued muscle weakness or paralysis because the myelin is kind of getting attacked in this 
backwards direction or reverse direction like so. Kind of the interesting thing is people who suffer from this oftentimes recover spontaneously all on their own without any intervention. So it's really interesting syndrome to look at.